Brian Beckman has been drinking and taking illicit drugs for hours when his wife returns home. I thought you were going to stop doing this crap. This is one of many episodes over the last few months that usually end in heated arguments between the two. Unfortunately, this argument takes on a tragic ending as one life is lost and another is changed Don't. forever. A neighbor has called police and reported gunshots fired. A white male was seen leaving the residence operating the black 2004 Ford Explorer. A bolo, or be on the lookout, has been issued for the Ford Explorer as well as the white male, who may be armed and dangerous. Troopers participating in a speed enforcement detail hear the bolo announcement and see a vehicle matching that description traveling at a high rate of speed. They proceed to initiate a traffic stop. Put your hands out the window. With your left hand, open the door. What? What on the Turn around. What? Turn around. Put your hands out. Be side. Walk back towards my boy. Keep walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep walking. Stop. Keep walking. Whatever. Take these steps to the right. <laughs> Once the suspect is taken into custody, evidence found in his person and from the vehicle will be submitted for processing. Back at the crime scene, the Kentucky State Police Forensic Laboratories and state troopers have moved into action. Crime scene investigation is a tedious process that involves detailed documentation of the scene and collection of any physical evidence, and often is not what you see portrayed on popular television shows. We will show you the step-by-step -step process from the beginning when the evidence is collected all the way through the actual lab testing that takes place. The Kentucky State Police Laboratories provide crime scene assistance to law enforcement agencies throughout the Commonwealth they respond to complex homicide scenes and assist and advise with evidence collection and packaging. After evidence is collected at the scene, it is properly packaged to prevent loss or damage and is labeled for identification without the package having to be opened. Each item is in its own package and a chain of custody is maintained for court purposes. The detectives in this case have turned the evidence over to a trooper for delivery to the lab. Once at the lab, analysts from the different sections firearms, trace, toxicology, drugs, and forensic biology are called up to sign for and take possession of the evidence items that they will work on within their area of expertise. In a firearm death, bullets and casings are collected at the scene for comparison in the laboratory to any weapon police locate and suspect of being used in the crime. My name is Jessica Copeland and my specialty is firearms and tool mark identification. A common request that we receive at the forensic lab is to determine whether or not a bullet or cartridge case was fired from a particular firearm. Firearms are test fired into a stainless steel tank filled with water and bullets are recovered from the tank. Those bullets that I fire from the tank are microscopically compared to evidence bullets. A comparison is conducted using this comparison microscope. This allows me to view two items simultaneously. If a sufficient level of agreement is observed, an examiner can determine that two items were fired from the same firearm. Suspected powders, pills, plant material, and liquids that are suspected to be drugs must be sent to the laboratory for positive identification and drug classification in order for the courts to know what type of drug is involved. Hi, my name is Jeremy Triplett and I'm the supervisor of the Controlled Substances section here at the Central Forensic Laboratory in Frankfurt. In the Controlled Substances section, we receive evidence from various law enforcement agencies across the state. When evidence is submitted to the Controlled Substances section for identification, the first thing we do is weigh the substance to know how much is present. Then we take a small amount of the substance and dissolve it in a chemical solvent. That solvent 
is placed on a sophisticated instrument called a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. Essentially what this instrument does is identify a substance on the molecular level. The results of the instrument will tell us what substance is present in the evidence. And we can then look at the substance to determine whether it's a controlled substance or not. At that point, we can produce a report to provide to the agency that submitted the evidence for use in court. Fibers collected from the scene can be compared at the lab to fibers from the clothing of the suspect. Hello, my name is Jack Reed and I work for the State Police at the Central Forensic Laboratory in Frankfort, Kentucky. I work in the trade section which does all types of different evidence. We look at hairs, fibers, paint, glass, gunshot residue, arson, and general unknowns. We either try to identify these items or compare them to a known standard. In this specific case, we found unknown fibers and were able to match those fibers up to a known standard using different instrumentations and microscopes. My name is David Clem and I'm a forensic scientist in the trace evidence section at the Kentucky State Police Central Forensic Laboratory. One of my principal duties here at the lab is the analysis of gunshot residue. Gunshot residue refers to tiny particles containing the elements antimony, barium and lead, which are released from a firearm when it is discharged. Using a special type of microscope called a scanning electron microscope energy dispersive spectrometer or SEM EDS, we can view and test the composition of these particles, which are much too small to be seen by a conventional microscope. In this particular case, a gun was fired at the scene, so gunshot residue kit was collected from the suspect and sent to the laboratory for testing. Gunshot residue was found on the suspect, which means that he either handled an object with gunshot residue on it, discharged a firearm, or was in the proximity of a discharging firearm. Upon completion of the case, the results were sent to the investigating officer. I'm Joshua Hines. I'm a forensic biologist with the Kentucky State Police at the Central Forensics Laboratory in Frankfort, Kentucky. I work within the DNA casework section. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. This is what makes you, you. You get half from mom, half from dad. You combine them together and you make a unique individual. Once evidence is received within the casework section, it could be tested for blood, semen, or saliva. Chemicals will be applied to these items to indicate whether any of these three are present. At that point, further testing is done to show whether it's human or not human. This tells investigators that the suspect was present at the scene. A report will be written and issued to the investigating officer. Hi, my name is D.W. Eversole. For the last 12 years, I've worked for the Kentucky State Police Central Forensic Laboratory in Frankfort, Kentucky. I work in the toxicology section. Our primary duties are focused on analyzing blood and urine evidence for the presence of drugs and alcohol. The blood and urine evidence that we receive typically comes in as a general unknown, meaning that we don't know what types of drugs might be found. It's our responsibility to use a variety of different testing methods to try and determine what types of drugs might be there. As it applies in this case, the drug content of the blood was found to contain cocaine at a concentration of 40 nanograms per milliliter. In addition, ethyl alcohol was also found at a concentration of 0.06 grams per 100 milliliters. The results of this examination were compiled into a laboratory report. The report was then forwarded to the investigating officer and the county attorney. Many times analyst expertise in their particular areas are utilized in courtroom settings. Analysts are impartial and use science to provide facts in search of the truth. Forensic laboratories are science-based. In order to work at the Kentucky State Police Laboratories, applicants must have, at a minimum, a bachelor's degree in chemistry, biology, forensic science, or a closely related field. The KSP Forensic Lab consists of 91 forensic scientists who serve 450 law enforcement agencies. Last year, they processed 53,000 cases among Kentucky's 120 counties. There are six forensic lab locations in Kentucky. The Western Lab, located in Madisonville, the Jefferson Lab, located in Louisville, the Southeastern Lab, located in London, the Eastern Lab, located in Ashland, the Northern Lab, located in Cold Spring, and the Central Lab, located in Frankfort, Kentucky. The laboratory both clears potential suspects as well as links suspects to the crime. Forensic scientists must concern themselves with the science itself, not the crime. To be useful in a court of law, their testimony must be objective, reliable, and based only on scientific fact. If the facts show that no clear conclusion can be drawn, they must state this as their finding. Forensic scientists are not on the side of the law. They are on the side of scientific truth and fact and must stand behind whatever outcome their findings show. 
Because of the diligent work of troopers, detectives, and forensic lab staff, the suspect in this case was convicted of murder, possession of a controlled substance, drug paraphernalia, and driving while intoxicated, and is currently serving a life sentence. For additional information about the Kentucky State Police Forensic Laboratories, log on to kentuckystatepolice.org.